Hey everybody, uh, Peg Leg Dad here. Uh, so this week I kind of want to talk about one of the side effects of chemo and one that has somebody who's younger and having gone through cancer is kind of a bigger one uh, and that's infertility. So there's numerous meds that will cause infertility and guys, gals, same thing, just different obviously ways that it, uh, it affects you. So I won't go into that too much um, for guys. There is the possibility that it can reverse itself over time. Um, generally speaking, it takes at least a year for things to kind of recover if they're going to, and that can change over time as well. Um, but at least a year is usually about how long it takes. And so three of the meds that affect that were the three meds that I got. So doxorubicin and methotrexate are not necessarily ones that will cause it, but can. Uh, and cisplatin is one that is one of the more well-known ones that will cause infertility. Uh, unfortunately, that is actually one that is used for treating testicular cancer. So if you're a guy and you're going through testicular cancer, not only do you have issues, obviously, from the, the chemo, um, but you also have obvious issues from where the cancer is occurring. So kind of a double whammy for that. Uh, mine was not testicular cancer. Again, it was in my bone, in my hip, um, pelvis, femur, that kind of stuff. So cisplatin, again, one of the bigger ones for that. Um, basically, after you go through chemo and everything, and even prior, they're going to tell you about the side effects. And there's too many of them to remember all of them. Um, but again, if you're older, you're past having kids, you never want to have kids, things like that, not a big deal. Uh, myself being diagnosed at 28, and we had our one daughter at that point, she was had just turned two a couple months prior, so we had planned on at least two, maybe three uh, children, so it was kind of a big blow for us to hear that and really think about what that could possibly mean down the road. Um, now, as a guy, it's super easy sperm banking, easy process. Um, very, very cheap as well. Um, that was presented and we attempted. It just wasn't something that was going to work for us with time frames, um, amount of time that we had, things like that. And as a guy, you're only talking a few hundred dollars, um, which depending on where you're at and when you're going through things, that sounds like a lot of money uh, in the grand scheme of things compared to the cost of things like adoption and IVF and even for women who want to have their eggs frozen and stored and then used later on a few hundred dollars is cheap um, so as guys we kind of had a little bit easier in that sense um, but again i just didn't have that option because of timing and how quickly i needed to start chemo and some other things that were kind of going on as well so unfortunately for me that wasn't an option um, wife and i have gone through we've discussed different things like using donor sperm and one of her eggs um, you know different things like that even just a completely, you know, not her, not me type of a thing. Um, IVF, obviously, um, would be the, the donor sperm and then one of her eggs or even the other way around, or not the other way around, excuse me, but using donor for both. Um, still, the average cost of that, you're looking at, you know, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000, possibly more, and there's no guarantee that it's going to work the first time. So that's per cycle. Um, you know, if you've got to do two, three, four cycles, now you're talking easily... 20, 30, 40, maybe $50,000 uh, for everything to you know have a child. Uh, my wife also has a heart condition. So ideally her getting pregnant isn't, it's not the end of the world uh, with what she has and how early we were able to catch it. Um, odds are nothing would really come of it. Uh, but it's just one of those things that do you want to take the risk? You know, last year and a half hasn't exactly been the easiest and we haven't had the best of, of overall luck when you look at things. So do we really want to do that? And for myself, as, as bad as this sounds, the idea of it's her, you know, half her, if we used one of her eggs. Um, so half her, but nothing of me using a donor sperm. Again, as bad as it sounds, just wasn't something that I felt like I was going to be comfortable with. Um, considering all of the options and everything that was out there. So we really kind of took that one off the table, the IVF side of things. Um, now for women who are able to store their eggs and you know, at that point then you use IVF as well. That's part of that process. Hi, Sammy. This is my cat. One of them, Sammy. You guys can see Bentley down there. 
Um, storing eggs for women, you're talking 20 plus thousand dollars. Um, guys, like I said, it's easy. The banks don't charge that much to store our, our, our sperm, uh, but women, it's, it's definitely a lot more. So for, for you, if you're a woman or you've got a, a woman in your life that is young uh, and is going through chemo, uh, radiation will do the same things depending on where you're getting the radiation. I just have the experience with chemo. I never did receive radiation at all for my, my cancer. Um, Sammy, no. Sammy's very much into the nose rubs. He likes to rub everything with his nose. Mark it as his. He's our, our dominant in the house. He's the one who owns the house and he runs it and he knows it. He's just got to let everybody else know. Uh, but so, uh, yeah, so for women storing the eggs, again, it's, it's definitely a lot more expensive. Um, retrieval obviously is not as easy as it is for guys. Uh, there's surgeries involved in that, with that and everything. So overall, it's just not the easiest and, and um, cheapest of options, but it is certainly potentially cheaper than uh, adopting. You know, for women, again, you still have the IVF costs that are added into storing your eggs. So on top of the cost for retrieval, on top of the cost for storage, then you've got your IVF costs as well. Um, so that really kind of leaves, you know, fostering or adoption. Uh, the average adoption costs are 40 plus thousand dollars for a domestic. So again, I'm kind of speaking more to people in um, the US. It's kind of the, the experience, obviously for me and the knowledge that I have. Um, so 40 plus thousand dollars is the average cost. Now, if you want international, it can depend on where you're adopting from. Some areas are gonna be a little bit less, others a little bit more, um, but that's really, you know, kind of what you're looking at. Now, obviously childbirth, if you give birth to your own child, you're still talking 20, 30, $40,000 in cost, depending on what kind of birth you have. Um, but, you know, if you have health insurance, that's obviously going to cover that or, or cover a large chunk of that. You'll have your deductibles, your out-of-pockets, things like that. Um, but that's going to cover a large chunk of things. So, that ah, Bentley, lay down. So, you're not going to eat that full cost. Now, with adoption, yes, there's things, you know, the place that I work, we've got the option to get $5,000. The company will give us $5,000 to help cover some of the costs. Um, there's different organizations out there that will help with the cost of things. So yes, you've got options to kind of lower that cost, but to eat $40,000 plus out of pocket really isn't, uh, isn't the cheapest of things. So it's one of those side effects that when you're younger, especially it's really going to alter your life. Potentially it's going to change how you do things. Um, it's going to change what your, your future looks like, your family, uh, and whether or not you've got the ability to have a family or, you know, through adoption, you know, the, the blended family, things like that. So it's really something to be aware of. Uh, it's something to make sure that you have some information on and, and go through your options. Now, there's organizations out there, again, that will help with your your banking of sperm or eggs. So in the, the description for the post here, the video, I'll make sure I've got some of those tagged live strong, some of those types of things that will um, kind of provide some options and some information and potentially some help. Um, another thing, uh, you know, to look at with adopting is there are a number of agencies that will not adopt to families that have gone through cancer unless you've got, you know, a certain length of time where you've been no evidence of disease or in remission uh, or just flat out won't. So that's another thing to really look at and consider. Um, and make sure you're taking into account when you're trying to make your decisions. So again, I'll post those links, um, some different organizations, some different things that can kind of help with things, uh, and just some general resources on, on places to, to look for more information. Um, again, infertility is one of those for, for us younger folks who are going through cancer. It really can take a toll on you know, your life and your spouse's life. So really something to be aware of and, and to look into. And it's something I think a lot of oncologists will talk about, um, but maybe isn't as much time spent on that as there should be or could be. Um, yes, obviously if you're dead, you can't have kids, um, but it does change your quality of life 
after you beat cancer, after you've survived and the, the cancer is gone. So please make yourself aware of it. I'll go through some of the other side effects that I've gone through so that I've got some information on, obviously, uh, personal experiences kind of going forward. But this one I really wanted to touch on uh, just because we're in the process right now, my wife and I are, are of discussing what do we want to do? Do we want to adopt from foster care? Do we want to adopt through an agency, you know, what do we want to do and, and what does that look like for us going forward? So it's really something that we've been been going through quite a bit here recently. Um, follow me on here, obviously, if you're watching the video, subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, uh, at the peg leg dad on Instagram, uh, just the peg leg dad on Facebook, you can find me there. Uh, I've got different things, so post videos of, of what I'm doing. I've got something coming up here, hopefully, where I'm going to be doing uh, some kind of adaptive skiing. So we'll see how that goes. I wasn't any good at it with two. We'll see if I'm any better with one. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, that goes better than it ever went with two legs. So we'll see. Follow us or follow me on there. Uh, keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. And uh, I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day.